Only one kid in history had ever attempted what Benny was about to. And he got eaten. So we were worried. Real worried. Even when Benny brought out the secret weapon. Shoes guaranteed to make a kid run faster and jump higher. PF Flyers. All right, happy hump day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Slate Lace Podcast. Blair, how we doing? Oh, man. Uh, good. All right, good long, to hear. Long day, but good. Good you know? to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys, this is a film episode. We are going to be talking uh, The Blackening, and then we'll also be getting into uh, briefly into some Slate Lace Sports. So stay tuned at the end of the episode. Um, if not, you can finish, and you're just here for the review. You, you might, can exit. You uh, exit. <laughs> yeah, as soon hey, as it's done. You might even skip all of this and go straight to the sports. It depends that's on. True, that's true. It depends on who you are. But to the real ones, that are gonna stay from the beginning to the end. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, you might just be a sports head, and you're trying to get to to see the latest and greatest mm-hmm. uh, in NBA uh, off season. NBA world. Um, but either way, um, let's get started here. Uh, like I said, we're talking The Blackening, mm-hmm. um, a movie. I'll get into a little bit more on the initial thoughts, but I had sent the clip to the group a while ago. Um, like, I think almost, I want to say six, seven months before the movie came out. Cause they put the I'm teaser. not in the group a lot, though. No, you're only in there when the, the Lakers got swept Don't and start. then it was hot. Are you really saying that was the last time I was in the group? I think so. You had sent something and then you was mad because I was quote unquote trolling. Look, ladies and gentlemen, do you that see that? was probably the last thing I said in the group. I feel like it was that 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 day or something. I think we ended up getting cool off minute. subject. That was a cool minute ago. Yeah, we ended up getting off subject that day too and talking about something else. But I think mm-hmm. that was the last actual day. Dang. Um, but anyways, I sent this trailer for The Blackening. Um, yeah, I would say like six or seven months before it came out, and I was like, it wasn't like it was one of the teasers, I guess. And I was like, okay, this looks interesting. And then, yeah, Eric was saying, yeah, it looks good, but like hopefully it doesn't disappoint when it comes out. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear whether we were disappointed or not, um, toward the end of this episode. episode. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but let me get into it. All right, the synopsis for the blackening. Seven black friends go away for the weekend and end up trapped in a cabin with a serial with a killer who has a vendetta. Will their street smarts and knowledge of horror movies help them stay alive? Probably not. Good question. Now, it is written and directed or is written by Tracy Oliver and Dwayne Perkins right. and directed by Tim Story. It is starring Grace Byers, Jermaine Fowler, Melvin Gregg, X Mayo, Dwayne Perkins, Antoinette Robertson. I'm going to butcher this guy's name. (laughs) Sinqua Walls. Don't know. Sorry. Don't don't kill me. Uh, And Jay Farrell and Yvonne Orji. Um, So, yeah, that's the cast. That's the synopsis. Uh, Let's get into a little bit of initial thoughts here before we get into some pros and cons. Um, Blair, you just mentioned that you didn't see the initial. That's where I was going with it. The initial so, message from me, but you've been going to the theater. So did you see the no, trailer? That's what I, so, so that's what I mean. So it's a little wild to me that you miss all these trailers. Yeah. So as much as you go to the theater, not really, because I'll be in line at Chipotle. <laughs> oh, that's right. You do come in at the last minute. <laughs> so not but here's really. the thing, though. Huh. I still go late. But so I get there for the preview. I always because catch. the crazy thing is, like, okay, so if the movie's at five, mm-hmm. I'm in my seat five fifteen. So you in your seat by like five thirty. I'm, I, I I kid you not. I always either get in right when it, it like goes from fade to black to the opening yeah. scene or. Cause, to the world, yeah. right? <laughs> but <laughs> because that's also a fake out. Because you really like up, oh, strap in, and yeah. then it's but it's pretty to this out. place. Yeah, but, but no, yeah, okay. So you're coming in at least like thirty minutes behind because I think you guys would be shocked to know how long it actually is before that movie actually starts. It's about it's about it's almost it's, you got you think, yeah. it's about an hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's like tapping 20. it's tapping on an hour. No, 
know, Blair, it's law. It's more than 20. Well, then I gotta get there soon. I'm gonna I'm actually time it out. We'll do a little slightly special. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, we might put it on Instagram mm-hmm. and be like, how mm-hmm. long does it take? But it's, it's, it's 25, minute, it's 25 to 30 minutes. Sure minute. Cause I'm in yeah. there. I always end up rushing and I'm like, wait a minute, what am I rushing for? Yeah. You're like, um, I know I got previews. Yeah, yeah. So I get in there by like the 15 minute mark and yeah, I'm there for like full preview. Yeah. They're just wrapping up the little games that they're playing, mm-hmm. little trivia. Mm-hmm. And I'm in there like, man, I didn't miss nothing. Yeah. But go ahead with the initial shot. So, so that's so why you don't see a lot of trailers. That's why I never catch the trailers. I either catch the trailers from uh, one of my friends who's always sending me trailers because he's like a producer. Uh, or, you know, you send them, but the problem is, is that I'm never in the group chat enough to catch them. So that was where I was leading with in the beginning when you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm just not in the group chat enough. So, like, you send it and I'm like, what? We're going to see the blackening? What's, what's the blackening? That doesn't even sound familiar. I don't have a clue what it's going to be about. I mean, it sounds horror-ish, right? But I don't really know. So yeah, it's I was definitely got like, that horror title. Right. So you were like, go see the blackening. And I'm just like, all right. I don't even like I don't have a clue what I'm getting ready to sit down and watch so I don't really have any initial thoughts and then but yeah yeah uh for me quite the opposite you guys obviously know I'm the one that sent the (laughs) original post that initiated this whole thing pretty much so uh I was excited uh you know I always say horror comedy are my favorite genres and I felt Mm -hmm. like this was a good combo of both um so you know I was I was ready to see it from the jump um yeah I did. I knew Yvonne Orgy, obviously. Jay Farrell, obviously. Mm-hmm. The Jermaine Fowler character, obviously. Well, I didn't even know. Yeah, about the characters. Yeah. yeah. So I knew them, but then there's a lot of the cast that I didn't really know, and I've gotten to know more uh, as I looked them up after this film. So you know, X Mayo had been writing for the Daily Show, and then Dwayne Perkins actually wrote the movie. Um, so it was interesting to find out a little bit more about those characters, or I mean, those actors and who they really are, but. I didn't know much about the cast, but I was like, all right, cool. Like, Yvonne Horch is going to be leading a horror movie. So, you know, that had me, you know, wanting to check out the movie. I just thought it was going to be funny, and I thought it was going to be, like, a good time. So, I was definitely excited, and when I saw it was coming out, I had to go support on opening weekend. So, yeah, definitely something that I would want to see. It's a movie that's up my alley. Uh, obviously, you guys know that by this point in the podcast. Did I, yeah. Did I catch it opening weekend? I don't think, I don't think you did. I, you did not get there opening weekend. Yeah. You saw it about, like, maybe two weeks after. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, but I had to go support. You know, you got to support the black films right when they drop so they get that yeah. good box office rating. Well, I didn't even know, again, I didn't even know it was a black film. I just right. thought it was a film, yeah. Yeah. The title makes sense, though, once you sit down and you watch once you, it. Yeah. You're just like, oh, well, yeah. But but it honestly could have been anything. But I felt like you knew it was going to be horror, but it could have been, it could have been, you know, like an insidious it, it, type it, or so, something. So, if anything, I would have thought it was like a um, scary movie, but with The Awakening. Mm, okay okay because of the blackening yep yep that's a good guess um but let's get into some of the pros and cons here uh blair you want to start with some pros start with the good yeah it was fun yeah i was I uh i was laughing a lot for sure yeah i didn't even, and the thing is i didn't even think that i would well again i didn't know and yeah and, and, and you're not a laugher guy right exactly i'm not a laugher like, guy. like you're not either. trying to be yeah. <laughs> the fu- and the funny thing is because you know people always like try to tell me that they think like i'm like a fun funny guy like you know i do the laughs the smiles this uh-huh. this and that but Ooh. then i'm actually not really Uh-oh. contrary to what they all believe what no, I was thinking, uh, because there's a show that I was watching. I'm sorry, I watch it now, like, uh, because it's only That's two seasons. Show, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. yeah. It. Uh, it's on HBO Max, but it was only two seasons that got canceled. <laughs> but it's by a very funny woman, <laughs> and, uh, she's, like, the, a comedian and a comedic writer, <laughs> and her husband's, like, a lawyer in the show, <laughs> and he's like, you know people think I'm funny, and she's like, sure, sure. He's like, no, they do, like, <laughs> they tell me. But that's what that whole thing reminded me of. Yeah. He's like, yeah, if you say I'm a funny guy, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure, if you say so. But nah, for real. They, but no, they, I get it. You're just not like a comedy head. That's yeah, why I was saying yeah. that. But go ahead. You know, yeah. So, um, but but yeah, I found myself laughing. And uh, I like the tone and the directed audience. Because obviously mm-hmm. it's clearly for people that are born, I want to say like, what, 1987 to like... Yeah, it's definitely to like ninety nine, mid not, mid yeah. mid to late thirties. That's where yeah. that yeah they. Rock. That, I mean, that's for sure the sweet spot. But you'll definitely catch some people in the twenty five to thirty range. Oh yeah, also yeah, yeah, yeah. As well, yeah. though, 
for sure, for sure. Uh, but so it was funny, and it and it and it really obviously resonated with me because I'm watching and I'm like, yo, then like this is like low key people you hang out with, right? This is low key like maybe who I am. This is low key a situation that I might find myself in. And so because it was so relatable, it was fun watching. And so, you know, uh, because it's of the present, right? It, uh, the jokes you're laughing at are currently happening. The, uh, the, the, the situations that they're bringing up that are happening in current life are literally currently happening right now as well. So um, it was kind of cool to catch something so present considering that like, you know, um, I'm a dinosaur. And so the comedies that I might watch are like 60 years old. So you're laughing at 70 year old jokes, you know, 60 mm -hmm. year old jokes where it's just like, yeah, I mean, the jokes are super dated. But so everything that you're kind of laughing at now and watching happen now are like as if it's on SNL and it, it, it's happening up to the moment. So, yeah. so I mean, man, it was it was it was fun. It was, yeah. it was, I've just got to say for me to make it real concise is just fun, funny, um, cool to kind of feel like it was of the present and like we're living that life because we are probably in the age bracket of the character. Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it's a fun movie because it really is pretty funny. It's mm -hmm. well written. Mm -hmm. um, it's entertainment from the top. Like there's no lag in this movie. Yeah. It's right to the point. It's yeah. a good, a good length. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the film is not long at all. Exactly. Yeah. So you're not sitting in there. There's no part that's like drug out. Like, okay, they could have cut the scene. Like everything yeah. is crucial. It is a fun ride. It's entertaining from the start. The cast is good. Like I was mentioning earlier, um, getting to see some of the fresh faces. I don't know if they're fresh faces in Hollywood, but they're definitely fresh faces to me. Um, and then just the kind of unique take on this horror slasher genre. Because, mm -hmm. you know, these movies can get real gory and real cheap. Yeah, but this one it kept it classy, I would say, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was just a really nice twist on this like there's a killer in the house mm -hmm. uh, type of situation. So yeah. I think that it's unique. It's definitely a unique one, and it's it's a good laugh, mm -hmm. and it has all the humors from the culture, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. It does, um, but that's what makes it. That was my pro, you know, for sure. Yeah, the black audiences. It's a super relatable film. Um, it's great to see black friendship, black relationships. Uh, you know, they went to an HBCU, they're coming mm -hmm. back for the reunion, so they're mm -hmm. educated. So to see us in a good light, it's a yeah. good time. Yeah, you and mom always preached that, so that's dope. We uh, preached what, the education? No, being painted in a good light. Oh, yeah, 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 we got to. We can't, you know, <laughs> yeah, they can't have us out here looking for the <laughs> At this point for black people. Uh, yeah, uh, but no, it, it's good to see us painted in a good light. This ain't yeah. no, you know, we're not on the plantation, so yeah. we, I'm good. Look, yeah. you know, I be saying I don't rock with the slave movies. Yeah, no, you don't. You say it all the time and you be <laughs> mad. Um, what was I going to say, though, with what you were saying? Um, uh Thing I forgot when it comes back, I'll, 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 I'll we'll circle that. back. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, when there's good, there's bad. I mean, for me, I had to mm -hmm. kind of dig a little bit deeper. But Blair, you okay. have any cons off the top of your head? Um, the story was just okay. The story wasn't too special. It wasn't really deep. Mm -hmm. um, could have been a little more intricate, you're saying? Yeah, it could have been a little bit more intricate, right? Uh, the funny thing is, is I'm watching and I kept thinking the film was going to be deep. So like... When the plot and stuff was unfolding, I was just kind of like, that's it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what? That, that's it? That That's what this, this is all about? That what? And also, because the ending was so, like, kind of straightforward, it may be slightly lazy. I even hate to say that because I don't really have a con for this movie. Mm -hmm. But, like, I kind of already thought that when homie showed up. Mm -hmm. I was like, is he a op? But as the kids say. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no way, it's that easy. And then it kind of was, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I get what Blair's saying, and that's probably going to be my con too as well. And then uh, when I finished the cons, I just make want to make sure we circle back that I wanted to touch on him as a character, and I wanted to touch on uh, our like whole just basically race as well. Okay. With that. Um, but so the for me that those would be the cons. Uh, for for it's just kind of like the story. It just was just like meh, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. really anything special. Which then meant the series of events that kind of played out were met. It just was funny. So because it was funny, it was able to mask it that, that there, there wasn't really a story or much going on behind it. And the characters weren't truly, truly three-dimensional, right? So, like, 
the the characters motive the, the character motivations and why things were happening were just so shallow that you know when when things were revealed later you're just like oh yeah oh yeah I mean that yeah that's that's unfortunate you know so and that that that's my big overwhelming con that that disrupts this film because obviously time perfect right uh entertainment right it was fine you know so all the things that we kind of usually judge over here on the slate lace like yeah it's favorable but at the end of the day because the story wasn't solid right like the film overall can't really be graded that high i feel like um no i mean i agree with you on like well first of all i want to say i want to start by saying like don't really these cons are nitpicking. Like okay. I don't have well, for you because you really yeah enjoy for me it. yeah I don't really have that many cons. Okay. Like I'm gonna tell you go see it. Okay. Um, but yes, I agree with yours. Is the ending being a little too simple? But like, even beyond the ending, just like the the just the just the whole plot itself, the way it's well, through. yeah. I guess mine is more just like the way they wrapped it up. I guess okay. so. I'll say mine the way they wrapped it up. They could have gave us a little bit more. But because mm -hmm. again, I felt like that was gonna be the case really early. Okay. And yes, I am the to, pat, to, to yeah. my own horn. Mm -hmm. I am kind of good at guessing where it's gonna go, or okay. like you know, guessing what characters are gonna say. But that's just because I watch a lot of movie and TV. But yeah, this one was like it felt like oh man, I wish there was like a little something. Yeah. And they did try to give us a little something too. Like they did uh, try to make it. I don't think so. They tried to like they tried to do it, but they could have made it more intricate. So again, I'm nitpicking. Um, I think you know Blair has more of a con than I do, or is, you know takes more you know wants more from the ending than I guess I do. But I guess I'd have to say but that. I was wanted, my you keep saying the end. I want the ending, but I also want the beginning, middle, the beginning. Yeah, middle. mine is more just the ending, like okay. I was saying. Mine's just the ending. Um, and then also, I had read a review, and one person was saying uh, for his con, mm -hmm. he rated it rotten because he felt like the movie was a little bit more pretentious. It was trying to be something it's not, mm -hmm. that it was more Wayans Brothers and jo uh, Jordan Peele, which was interesting. I think it's more Jordan Peele than it is Wayans Brothers. I think it's more Wayans Brothers, but I also don't think the movie was trying to be this like pretentious thing. I think it was really like come in for a good time so, type deal. I don't think the movie was, ooh. to me, I don't think the movie was trying to be serious. I think it was trying to be a joke, 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 Man. but they did. It was more, it's more elevated than your typical Wayans Brothers. It's more elevated than Medea, but it's not psychological like Jordan Peele. Go ahead. Man, I wish, I really wish we had the, the, the team to be able to pull up tapes. So remember a long time ago, we were, we were sitting here talking, man, it's got to be at least 35, 40 episodes ago. And so we're sitting here talking and we were watching, I can't remember what it was. It had to be us or something like that. And I basically was saying that when an artist comes onto the scene and they put together a film that ends up kind of changing the way that we see things what ends up happening is is a, a new framework and a, and, a, and a path is now laid and the foundation is there and people then begin to walk and they allow uh, so much to happen for all of the other artists that come after and so when you say that I sit here and I watch the blackening and I do see Jordan Peele right I do see Get Out I do see us. I do see those movies inspired that or that that, that blackening is uh, inspired, by, inspired those by those, right? You just have strictly cinematography and the way that the background is set up, the choice in colors, right? How dark it is, right? The amount of um, obviously just using African American uh, uh, characters and the tropes and the and the and the things that are happening, right? You just see it, right? the the comic relief you know the delivery of the the comical lines right still with the darkness and the use of blood and things like that right you just go dang jordan peele really just did that for everybody and so it does feel jordan peely you know and yeah. so yeah i would agree with um that, that dude's review you know and like i didn't necessarily think of it too too much because like i said what i feel is is what we'll talk about later but but that that's interesting that he says that because, like I said, so many years ago when we sat here talking, literally at these exact same seats, I was saying that that's what happens. And so it births so many films. 
And this is just the tip of the iceberg, right? Because just remember, beneath all of this, there's going to be so many more films that are going to slowly come out and they're all going to feel like Jordan Peele because yeah. he just set a whole movement. Yeah, he has, he's going to have a heavy influence. But yeah. this one, I felt like they weren't trying to be too... Uh, educational they weren't trying they to touch help. too much they i think it was more just trying to come in for a fun time i really do believe that but i mean again yeah i just i just yeah. i mean he's gonna be influencing everyone obviously he's great yeah. but this one i don't think like the film was trying to be too serious yeah um but no what were you gonna say about jermaine fowler's character okay so i find it very intriguing how they basically uh picked uh What's his name from Family Matters? Steve Urkel. Okay. That's basically what the character is that he's supposed to be, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now that you're saying it, I didn't really... Yeah. Oh, a thousand percent. I wasn't percent. going anywhere with it. I was just like... A, th right, a thousand percent. And so... Was Urkel a Republican, though? <laughs> Sorry, it's beyond the Republican part, right? <laughs> but but here, here is what they did, right? So... He is essentially the Steve Urkel character. He is the butt of every joke, right? He is what we would say in, in our society, which is a problem, right? But in our society, we would say that he is not black, right? And so... Um, they'd be like, why do you act white more, I would say. Not necessarily like, you, you're not black. That's what I'm saying. It's a different... <laughs> It's a different. It's those two different things. Like acting white does not mean you're not black. Because at the end of the day, you're you always can't change your exactly. But I'm just saying. But I get. Just, I get what you're saying. Go ahead. Okay. Go. Go. So go. let me go on this go. ride, right? So, so that's what I'm saying. So that is part of what the the overarching theme and what they want the audience to take away from it is, right? And that is part of our flaw in the African American culture is that. Because when someone comes along and doesn't necessarily do something that everyone else is used to seeing, right? What they've grown accustomed to, you are like, whoa, like, what, what are you doing? Like, yeah, you're, no, you're not black. Like, that, what? That's stuff that white people do. Or, you know, why is your voice like that? Why are you into that? You know, why are you voting for Trump? You know, why are you red? What? That's not how we get out. Yeah, you, nah, you're not one of ours. I don't claim you, right? And so the whole film, you know, you're kind of seeing that, you know, and you're just like, dang, like that's so that's so cold. Right. But it's you know, you kind of have to show it. You know, you got to kind of hold the mirror up to our faces. Right. To kind of show us like, dang, this is how we've been acting as a society. This is really what we're doing. You know, and I know you're going to say it's not that deep. No, no, I, I, that's fine. I agree with this. But but I think that that's partially what it is that they were they were trying to show. And then so then i.e. his motivation is because that is how he's been acting, you know, but I did like that the, you know, you're, you're, all of the characters that they showed were some different type of mm -hmm. what is. Supposed so to you're be saying like. he was he became who he was just because of years of being told that he was not black. I have a, I don't want to call the person out because this is probably going to be the episode that goes viral and then they're going to hit me up. Uh, but it's a, a black YouTuber, right? Uh -huh. And this is my issue. Well, I don't know why we're getting into race wars right now. It's what it is. That's gonna, literally what the film is. Do it. There's a black YouTuber. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, he's, I can't even say what thing he's in, mm -hmm. like what genre, but his work is predominantly around surrounded by white people, mm -hmm. um, white people with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And when the whole Black Lives Matter movement was going on and they were yeah. begging people with platforms to say something, mm -hmm. they're like, everyone needs to say something like, use your platform, use your platform. And people was coming out and people were saying things. Mm -hmm. He didn't address it. Yeah. And then he's like, look, like, so a lot of you guys are in my comments and you're telling me to address this Black Lives Matter thing. Well, here's the, he's black, dark. Mm. I, well, dark. I mean, I'm guessing because this is what this D whole argument is about. Dark, so yeah. Like, it's dark as us. Yeah. He's on there talking, and then he says, I'll address it. I grew up in mostly white spaces yeah. where I was the only black kid, and yeah. my black peers would tell me, oh, you're into that? That's so lame, and dude, mm -hmm. that's weird, mm -hmm. and da 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 Now he's successful, smart, mm -hmm. like all those things. Mm -hmm. But it's like... So he's like, he didn't basically want to do, put out no Black Lives Matter right, thing. Right, right, right. Because he's so hurt. Right. But, but here's the thing that's weird, though. Because, I mean, 
No, oh yeah, per, no, I agree with that. I agree with the connection. That's why I'm bringing up the story. Yeah. I don't like the fact that now you're just, what, so you hate yourself for being black? Because I can say the same thing. You hear my voice. You hear how yeah. I talk. People are always like, why do you sound white? Like, yeah. at Holmes Middle School, shout out. Yeah. Like, oh, what, what, like, yeah. But that didn't scar me. That doesn't scar me to now want to go and be anti-black or be around white people or yeah. or not put out something for Black Lives Matter. Like, no, don't kill us in the street. Like, so it was just kind of weird. Like when he said that, I was yeah. I was look, I was turned off a little bit when he said that because I'm like, so you got a little bullied and it was a little yeah. bit of a it was a little bit of racism and they were like wanting you to be the stereotypical black dude and mm-hmm. you weren't. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, dude, so you're not gonna fight for your race? Correct. Like, that's weird. Correct. But that—that's how it is. Like, that's that's you, like so I would never not stand up for black people. Because not that's do the, you. Not try to push the culture forward. Because that's you. But I probably got the same thing he did. Okay, oh, so he's he acting like maybe what, what, maybe what, his was a little bit worse, but I, largely me and you. Well, maybe not you because you went to Van Nuys, but I was in a white space as well. Oh. Well, no, I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you you know, they had minorities over there, but yeah. maybe not Patrick Henry or something like that or Beckford for sure not. Yeah. So we both probably were like, oh, well, we were serving people on the, on the tracks. So maybe- <laughs> Yo, they got served. <laughs> maybe but- not. <laughs> but I'm just, <laughs> the only black is fast. Uh, yeah. But no, I'm just saying we've both probably been in spaces. Yeah. You within the film now. Yeah. Saying what, well, you know. This is not the typical black person. We're not the typical black people. Yeah. But you still would rock for your race. You would still stand up for black people, yeah, correct? Yeah, you... All right. So... so go ahead. Go thing. ahead. Even right now, I work in an all-white space. Yes. I work in Venice, right? Yes. Like, that's just how it is. Uh, I'm point, in the hood, so but, I, I'm with, with my but, nerd. But look, here's the thing that you're missing. This is your life. This is my life. And every person goes through different things and has different outcomes, Mm -hmm. right? And so what happens to them, you cannot control. And so someone might go through things and they're bullied and they're not called black because their voice sounds like mine sounds like right now. They're in the anime, you know, and they like Taylor Swift, right? And so they get made, they get made for right, for, for being into those things and they cannot be part of our culture, right? And so then... You hear that for so long that you feel like you're not wanted, right? And so this is why people literally talk about bullying and why you have to put a stop to it, right? This is why people talk about you have to go to therapy. That's why all of these things happen because then you cope with it for so long. So then you, you, you grow up with this chip on your shoulder. So you're like, I'm going to prove that. I, you know, I am this or I am that or this is just who I am, right? And then so you kind of like paved this way like you're, this guy you're talking about did. And so then something happens and then now all of a sudden you're a black man that has now surpassed most African Americans, right? Because we usually only make it to, to middle class at best, right? And we don't really strive, we don't really get above that. So then when he does... Now, all of a sudden, you are viewed as a leader, regardless of what your history was at this point, i.e. Tiger Woods, right? You know, maybe like Jordan Peele now and, and, and people like that, right? Where it's like, so you, all of that doesn't matter anymore now, right? Now, it's all of a sudden, you're a black figure who was in one of the highest places that you can be at. So now we look to you for guidance. And so you're supposed to say stuff now, mm-hmm. Right. But you are so hung up on the past Mm -hmm. and how people treated you that you don't want to speak on it, Mm -hmm. right? You're like, nah, this is how y'all treated me after all these years? Yeah, I have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. Mm, It is what it is. Mm, It sucks. That keeps happening. You know, maybe we just be more like me, right? But it ain't me, so I just don't care. And so you turn your nose to your own people, right? And so, you know, it is what it is. And the crazy part is, is probably the guy's following is still going to be many, many of, of races, going to be a lot of white people and it's going to be a lot of all the other ethnicities. So he's still able to make money. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, but you're saying people are like those villains are created. Essentially. Right. And so and I agree with that. that it's so just that, a, it's just upsetting, I guess. So Go. your so your threshold and what you are able to deal with is different than him. Right. What the way that mom and dad raised us was to be tough regardless because life is tough, right? You will, we will always encounter something, but it won't hurt us. It won't break us, right? So we are mentally strong or mentally tough, right? 
you know, the two of us sitting here together in our third, you know, 15 years of work, how many times have we called out? Like maybe never. I've never, never. called out. Bingo. Never. Not a single day. Not a single day in our lives, right? But that's just how we are and that's just how that we're built. But the, the thing is, is that not every person was built that way. So he's somebody like that that has had those experiences and so it's traumatic to him, right? And so he can't carry on, right? And it's so... He's not able to let go, but somebody like us, we may hear something like that. And I'm just like, yo, it, it, it is what it is. And if I get to where I want to go 10, 5, 10 years from now, and you're looking to me for guidance, you know, I will, it's water under the bridge. That's how you thought about me, but I know you don't feel like that now. You know, now all of a sudden, the way that I, I view things is cool, but. Yeah, you know, so that was the only reason why I was saying that that's why he's like that when you're like, yeah, it's because he, was... he won't speak, but it's just he's been through so much and he can't get yeah. over it. Yeah, and to me, what okay. that was a light just kind of flickered, you know. But the ther situation. therapy is king, you know. Yeah, no, you it's gotta, just you gotta get some. It's just upsetting when there are black people out there like that. It's just like yeah, but yeah, it, but it is what it is. They they, they 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 got some deep wounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, so do I. But you know, mm -hmm. either way, again, people ain't cut from the same cloth as mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Draymond Green said, and we'll yep. get more on him later. <laughs> um, but anyways, let's get into some of the reviews here. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, guys. It did pretty well. I think it was well. kind of good, wasn't it? It did very well. I think from what I remember seeing. Very well. Are you about to be in the woods hunting with your hat? Oh, you got jokes. Blair Can't one. Camouflage with it. Man, I'm done sleeping with that fan. You see, yeah, it got me. Yeah, <clears throat> ever, ever since I was a kid. Man, if I slept with uh, a fan, guaranteed got sick. Even a crack of a window. Even a crack. Uh, yeah, I got it. Man, it's crazy. But anyways, on Rotten Tomatoes, it's 86% fresh. Great job. With an 85% audience score. So pretty much neck and neck audience and critics there. It feels a little steep for me. Oh, that feels a little steep. It was enjoyable, but it feels, but eighty six feels steep to that's me. That's that's a little rude. But you'll probably agree with the <laughs> that was rude of you to say. That's but true. you'll probably sure. agree with the peeps of peeps of people sure. of IMDb because they gave it a six point three, and you probably agree with that. That's more favorite. Exactly. But that's See? still a good film, though. Here you go. But let's get into the slate rate. The only rating that matters. Blair one two five entertainment. Hmm. I just realized, low key. Yeah, it's gonna be high. <laughs> <laughs> I already know how the scale slide at the slate pick. So I already knew this was gonna oh, be a dang, 10 out of 10 dang. go. Dang, entertainment? Shoot, I guess I gotta say four. Great job. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. It really was. It's a wild ride from start to finish. Uh, one to five originality. Dang. It's pretty original. <laughs> I'll say four. Eight out of ten. But, it, but it's more where it's eight. Mine's eight out of ten with an asterisk. You know. <laughs> you gotta please read the bottom. Uh, <laughs> I got one to five entertainment. I'm going five. All right, y'all know where I sit with this. You crazy. One to five originality. I'm going four. So I have a nine out of it ten. Ain't a nine out of ten. Eight eight nine, That's the problem. It, it I is. understand it, but it's not a nine out of ten. It's a nine to me, and it's a go see it tonight. It is on um, demand. You can now rent and buy it. Oh, okay, mom so and dad was asking check it because I was telling them now. Okay. Um, but yeah. Also, can we touch? I want to touch on two things before we move. Okay. On about this movie, the I love the tagline. We can't all die first. Mm. Um, I didn't know that was a tagline. Yeah. Okay. So that was what was on the movie posters because you know. Okay. Black people do what in horror films? Yeah, they die first. Exactly. And they was like, well, you can't kill all seven of us. <laughs> you gotta choose mm -hmm. one. Um, but stay tuned for who does die first. What was the poster? Uh, you didn't see it? It was mm -hmm. this. I hadn't even seen advertisement for, uh, advertisements for it. Well, you don't be paying attention. Okay. That was the... Oh, it literally says it on the poster. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, th I didn't know it said it like that. I thought it was in like small mm -hmm. or something. Um, but cool. yeah, so stay tuned for who does die first. Um, also, when they were playing the board game, did you have the answers to all the questions? Uh, yeah, I had it to a lot of them. For sure I did. I mean, obviously you knew the Viv. But let me let me just get on the air because Blair liked because the light skin. I knew you was going to say that. I knew you was going to bring that up. Yeah, because that's the truth. She's not even white. She's still black. 
It doesn't matter. You like the light skin on them. And that's very, like, that's wild to me. Because nobody that watches Fresh Prince, we have been talking about, very yes, young. yes, we have, ladies and gentlemen. And it's wild to me that he likes the light skin on Viv better. The funny thing is, I didn't even know it was that much of a thing until I saw this. I was like, dang. It's, it, was it's like really that? a thing. And people were very upset with the light skin and Viv. Dark skin and Viv. Cool to me. The dark skin and Viv for the win. No, she ain't cool. She was whack. <laughs> she was a watered down Aunt Viv. Um, yeah, it was whack. But anyway, no. Did you know 15 black inventions? Because that got that ought to been dead. Because... That's the funny thing, too, is I was like, y'all don't know all these inventions. Like, I know quite a few, but I don't think I could have ran off 15 with a with a. No, I knew, like, I, I think I head. knew one. Uh, and and then, then I thought the first answer was Anaconda, because Ice Cube uh, had survived with J-Lo, but they never gave that answer, remember? Because what's-his-name didn't answer, and then they killed him when they asked. It might have been that. Survived. It might have been that, too. But so there was, um... I knew those. You can't sing the Black National Anthem, though. All I know is lift that every voice and sing. Yeah, I only know the part that they all knew. Lift every voice. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd have been like, nah, nah, nah. Yep. Yep. what was the house guest when he said, when they were singing the camp song? You yep, know, he was just, yep, doing it. Do, yep. Do, yep. Do. That, that would have been me because I couldn't sing it. But anyway, it was cool to reflect on some of those questions. Uh, again, we knew the large majority, but I ain't going to sit up in here and be like, I, I can every single I, And I can name you 15 black adventures. But the thing is, is that. They went in with a group of people, so if we rolled up with maybe six yeah. other black people as well, we'd have been able to get all 15 answers. You don't think It'd so? have been tough. We'd have to go with some scholars, because mm-hmm. I don't think regular <laughs> black folk would know that. Mm-hmm. But we got to go with some educated individuals. But anyway, it's not the ones we hang out with. Um, True. Anyway, guys, go see the movie. It is phenomenal. It's not 8 out of 10 uh, or 9 out of 10. It's, it's not 8 or 9 go out of 10 it. to Blair, but to mm-hmm. me, it's good. It's a good time. It's fun. It's lighthearted. Go check it out. But next, we have to move on to Slate Lay Sports. Blair, as you know, the off season just keeps getting more and more intense, uh-huh. interesting, dangerous, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna dangerous ra- is what it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm gonna rattle off some trades that, and then you're just gonna give me the thoughts after on a couple of them. All right. So since we last saw you, Lillard, Damian Lillard has requested a trade. Yeah. Corey Joseph signs to the Warriors. Westbrook resigns with the Clippers. Kyrie resigns with the Mavericks. Draymond Green resigns with the Warriors. Lakers sign Gabe Vincent. Dennis Schroeder goes to Toronto. Ooh. Derek Derek Rose signs with Memphis, and Lakers signed Cam Reddish. Yep. Those are the mm-hmm. more th- those are the more notable ones, but there are some other little we gave um, up like Mark, uh, Marcus Smart. Not Marcus Smart because we talked about that, that one. Oh yeah. But uh, big homie Grant Grant Williams of the Celtics. He mm-hmm. got traded yeah. he to. Did Where did he go? He did go somewhere. He got a nice little contract. Yeah, but they gave him up for basically draft picks. So, yeah. but that happened literally like today. So it was before uh, I made these notes. Uh, who else is there? Uh, yeah, that is that but, is everything. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. There's some smaller ones like uh, Justin Holiday and stuff like that, but yeah. it's not you know any notable moves. But your thoughts on that? Lakers getting better. What do we think about Derrick Rose being a vet to Mr. Morant with uh, Marcus Smart? Like, what are your thoughts here? I mean, I just think Rose is out of gas at this point. So he's just kind of like... But he's also a guy, to me, that can play smart, though, and play within his... His, his, his abilities, yeah, you know, he don't try to do too much. Yeah, when your yeah. knees don't work like they used to. <laughs> like, the crazy part is, is Job Morant will be a Derrick Rose in, like, 10 years, too. Yeah. Once I can the, agree with once that. The leg go, once the legs go, and you don't really got a jump shot or nothing like that. You nah, know, you his jump shot is broke. That's what I'm saying. You just become like a, like, you know, just an average, you know, um, bench player. But uh, I, I think I, I've been I've been loving the le- the deals that the Lakers have been doing. You guys have been uh, doing your thing, and I'm not even really a Laker head like that. But y'all been, look. Yeah. Y'all been doing pretty good. We, we looking good. People yeah. are now thinking we'll probably be the number two seed I outside think, I, of. Look, uh, it's close. It's y'all up there. Yeah, we up there along for and sure. With, I'm with the si- and I'm sick about it. But yep. yeah, they up there yep. with, with the Nuggies. It's a beautiful thing. It's crazy how the, the Lakers reloaded because it's like what we got in that second half of the season is like a, a, a taste of what's to come. And then the fact that we almost retained everybody 
is crazy. I was hoping to be able to keep Dennis Schroeder, but we were kind of running out of money, and we still need a center. We still haven't got that last center. And, 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 and but Schroeder's no nah, Schroeder played D. Shooter play D. Look, look at Blake. And I know and I know a couple people right now that are making that face at me, but they they know he plays D. You okay. know. Um, but the point being is, right, so also I was gonna say the funny thing too is to see Poole had a little metamorphosis. You see his little seventies mm -hmm. uh little yep. mustache and all that stuff he got coming in now too. I'm like, oh, he ready to turn a whole he, yeah, he's ready to turn a whole new leaf in Washington. But um yeah, man, I'm just, uh, I'm still, I'm so excited for the Lakers now because we got this bright future ahead of us. And when I say that too, because I'm talking about even if LeBron is removed from this team and we get the more cap space he into the future. No, 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 but I just mean that that's like how good we're looking. We're like, even if LeBron isn't on the team, if we added another weapon, we could still be kind of where we need to be because the way that the Lakers are setting things up is. They don't want LeBron to have to be doing 40 minutes a night, right? Like, you're wanting him to kind of just chill, leave all the gas in the tank till the postseason, right? And then and then turn it on and get us to where we got to go. So I'm loving it, loving it right now. And then I'm, I'm really excited to kind of see, like, what guys like Grant Williams are going to do on their new teams, you know, and kind of see, you know, because now they'll be able to yeah, really be... They'll, they'll really get to be number one stars or number two options and three options. He, he on has to team. dial it back, though, him specifically, because he be trying to do too much sometimes, Derek Williams. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Him, yeah. Because I think he sees himself like a Desmond Bain. Yeah, it's a, yeah, even Desmond Bain. But no, yeah, no, Desmond can go. Desmond can go. He can, also, go. He can yeah. go. You're right. You're right. But, yeah. yeah. They're like two of the same, like, buff, you know, yeah. like. That's what's more. He's like kind of thick though, Williams. Like he got a little. He a little on the thicker side. Yeah, you know, but Bane oh, Bane is not. is ripped though. I would say, yeah. but but Williams be eating. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah. But anyway, right yeah, like I said, he hungry. Uh, if y'all can tell us where that's from, mm -hmm. for real. Anyway, um, is that all? Because I had some 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 thoughts as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I continue to be upset with with the Warriors. We're signing Corey Joseph. Great. I like yeah. the guy. What are we trying to be? The, uh, the, the, the smallest team in the league? So you we guys have. We don't have any money, though. We don't have anyone over 6'9. Mm -hmm. We continue to sign these little point guards. Mm -hmm. Are we trying to have four point guards in the rotation at one point? What, you, what don't are, have, you don't have money. What are we doing? Then get rid of somebody. Get rid of the right ones. Why did we give Draymond 100 million? Did we not think he maybe he split it up? He took the pay cut. I didn't hear about the pay cut, but the, it, it was one hundred. They restructured his deal. Remember, he 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 declined the first contract yep, to get it. restructured to yes. get this contract. And either way, he needed to be restructured to a lot less because <laughs> I don't I don't like the moves that we're making. Um, Chris Paul is gonna want to start. He's not gonna want to humble himself and come off the bench, right? Uh, so he, they're like, yeah, he gonna rock with the second unit. I said he gonna be in there with the first unit. Yeah, he one hundred percent gonna be in there. So I don't know what we're talking about. Like he gonna make the second unit better? Ain't no second. He's not coming off the bench because he's yeah. arrogant and annoying. Yeah. And um, then the the clips going viral. I think I sent it to you. Now where Draymond Straight was like, yeah, I don't have a good relationship with CP3 at all. Oh, like, you did? I told you. I say I told you nobody likes him. But he said it on his podcast, I would say, I think last year when they won the championship. Mm -hmm. But he's like, but I respect, you know, how long he's been in the game. But he even touched on how he's gave, how he saw Steph coming up and was a little jealous. Mm -hmm. So now we got to work with these fools. Like, again, I just continue to be sick with these moves. I don't see how we got better. It might just be trade bait. We, we, got, we got worse. I hope they're flipping him. I really do. Because I can't do this. I can't watch CP3 in a Golden State jersey. But on top of that, then we lost Dante. But I like that Dante's going to team up with his Villanova brothers. That's you Vincenzo. You that's really thought good. he was that good for you guys? Yeah, it's it's a better it's better than Chris Paul. Mm -hmm. It's he's like neck and neck with Corey Joseph. Like at least mm -hmm. Corey Joseph know how to win. He's been in the Spurs organization. But mm -hmm. yeah, we we got to make some moves here. Um, but yeah, Dante's over there in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. So shout out to him. He's a Nick, isn't he? Yeah, with with a uh, heart and uh, yeah. Whatever that Randall. is, name Brunson, because um, they went to Villanova, they won that championship. Oh, that's together. what you meant. Yeah. I was like, Randall is on the squad. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. So I just continue to be annoyed with what we're doing. The Warriors must have something at play because I have no idea what it is. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm confused. So 
I'm hoping we'll 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 be on the bubble spot and be able to sneak into the playoffs mm-hmm. once again because this is ridiculous. Uh, but like you, like Blair was saying, maybe it's a bargaining chip. I don't know, but bargaining them about this lead. <laughs> Go sit down. He's and I think he just wrote a book or something right now, too. 18 what? seasons. Uh, I think he just released his book, too, or something. That, oh, he did? Yeah, I ain't reading it. Man, we ain't got nothing. We don't want to hear nothing you got to say. But, Blair, anything else on the sports round here? Nah, I'm just, I, I'm curious to see what center we're going to end up getting. Because uh, I know we need it. Uh, yeah. We still need, we need some more length and size. But when AD goes to the bench, it, I honestly would be cool with giving Dwight Howard a, a, a vet minimum. Yeah. And just a couple of fun topics before we wrap up. Uh, let's move to the WNBA for a second because okay. I don't know how we haven't touched on this, but how do we feel about uh, Candace Parker joining the 73 win uh, team? Because you know she's on the a- Aces now, right? When did they win 73 games? I was joking. Oh. Like, <laughs> they, like the KD joining the 73 oh, nine. I was like, they were yeah. <laughs> No. Games. Uh, but it's the same kind of. <laughs> I mean, I'm still. Not, it's the team up, yeah, you know. Yeah, nah. Well, I like she, it. I don't care. She, she just, she just getting rings. Crazy part. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean the the power shift is so crazy right now in the WNBA that like the way that the current roster is is Vegas is gonna win last year, gonna win this year, and gonna win the next if they just keep the team the way that they are. Yeah. That's so crazy that they have yeah. four four to five of the top 15 players in the WNBA. Yeah. And, yeah, Chelsea Gray, day in and day out, crazy. Asia Wilson, I'm not, make, not my sick. favorite, but you got to respect the heck out of her. Um, makes you sick that yeah. two of them were on the Sparks, and the Sparks yep. just did what they did to get rid of them. Yep. Crazy to think we, about. We like to self-sabotage here in L.A. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I was joking. But Candace deserves this because, you know, the Aces have their own facility. They got the practice facility. Mm-hmm. They got the lockers. Again, she was on the Draymond Green podcast talking mm-hmm. about how she's – in her whole playing career, she's never had never a locker. Had I saw you know, it. yeah. yeah. So you saw the clip. You didn't listen to the whole mm-hmm. podcast. Make sure you uh, say that, okay? Don't be like, yeah, I was in. That I saw the. I mean, I just. Uh, I'm, a true, I'm a true. I'm a true. Podcast head. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so she was just saying, you know, like how uh, meek it is at a, <laughs> at other teams, and how much the Aces have <laughs> put in money. And, and the Aces owner has actually spent money for these ladies. So that's awesome to see. And hopefully every other club can adopt that. But also on that note, uh, you know, we have the women's soccer team, Angel City Football Club yeah. in L.A. as well. And they're the same way where they're pouring money into it and, okay. and treating the girl, the women more like the men. Okay. Whereas they're getting their lockers, they're getting these contracts, they're getting no, tra- yeah. they're getting no trade clauses. Um, and stuff like that. So there's a nice documentary on the Angel City on HBO Max. As you can tell, HBO Max is one of my favorite streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, but check it out there because it is a good one. And I like to see the direction that women's sports is taking now. I'm, I'm just hoping that moving forward that they can build enough of an audience. Yeah. Because once they build enough of an audience, the money will be there to be to allow like women to get these contracts that they like and all of these like uh, and there's still going to be pay discrepancies but well but but i mean that if if moving forward they were able to build like this really big fan base and following then they'll be able to get crazy contracts and things like that right so so we just have to hope and and it looks like it's going to happen because even though we always say right like you know growing up uh the women women's basketball basketball we were watching they were very talented, right? Mm-hmm. And they're super good. And then the girls now are also super good. But you, you're kind of seeing, like, the girls that are coming up right now, like, it's almost like most of the girls are dunking now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, some of the top athletes, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're dunking. But you got to remember that when we were kids, Lisa Leslie was, like, really the only one that could dunk. Then it was, like, Candace Parker, right? But now you're getting it where it's, like, that is slowly going to become the norm, right? And so then once you have so many girls that are coming up that can physically dunk and all of that, then you'll start to see more interest from men and women, obviously, because people just aren't necessarily watching in general, right? Like, there's a small group like us, you know, in our family and, like, a few others. But if, if, if they all can slowly start to watch and start to put money into it, then, right, then, like, the money will be able to come out and really flourish 
as you know, I eat you know uh, uh, women's soccer as well and the Angel City and all of that. So, so I'm super excited for the future just to see that all that's going to happen because I do believe and I do see a vision where you know 20 years from now it's grown exponentially where like there's so much more money that these women can make from it, you know, and not like low key need you know day jobs once the season's over and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like what these clubs are doing. Um, they're setting the standards, so hopefully that continues. Um, and soccer is always going to have like more of a following than basketball, which is insane. But it just always has been like yeah, that. Yeah, but what we're talking about though, that's like USA though. Yeah, but even though I feel like even like the club, like you think the, so? Yeah. Even more than like WNBA, huh? I feel like it. Women, yeah. women's soccer, huh? Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm, yeah, because so I, like, I feel like women's soccer is the only sport that like people are like they low key women might be better than the men. Like it, mm -hmm. it is that's that comparison is more at the USA level. But as far as viewership, I feel like it is more. But um, yeah, I mean I'm a fan of both sports, so yeah. I'll be tuning in. You yeah. know, uh, but they, so you know, Mikael Bridges has that three point celebration. Have you seen his three point Which celebration? One is it like this like, one? No, nah, when he does that we, one. Yeah, there we go. I but you see how people too. keep trying to uh, <laughs> impersonate it and then just been getting it wrong? Uh uh. That's like one of my favorite things on uh, the whatever, the explore page now. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think uh, Sabrina INS could try to do it, but then put like four fingers mm -hmm. out, or and then someone else in the NBA did it and put mm -hmm. four, and then he was like, it's three fingers, buddy. Like, yeah. But every, it's a sick, it's a sick celebration. Yeah, like, when he yeah. does it, he's like, after he makes it, it's cool, but it takes too long. That's number yeah. one. Get back on defense. Like, you, yeah. you got to turn your head and everything. Like, yeah. it's a lot. And then I see, like, little kids doing it, too, now. On these, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my gosh. He created a whole movement. Yeah, but he sure he might have the hardest three-point celebration to yeah, me. Yeah. I, that's, that one's pretty sick. But it's funny because people just butcher it. They be like, four-finger. I'm like, okay, now you just, I, I now like you just look one. corny, dude. I like that one. But I did also like when they do, like, the gun in the holster and when they would the, do the uh, this archer. One? Yeah, or the... Yeah, that one. I did like those yeah. two as well. But again, this is a lot of movement. Yeah. And so but it's, they're doing it as yeah. they're running back, though. Yeah. They're not just standing there. Yeah. But it's funny. It's a hard celebration. And then, yeah. like, when they do it, when they slow it down, like, the Nets, the Brooklyn Nets page, like, yeah. slowed it down a couple times. And then even when he had his time in Phoenix, like, it's sick. So props on creativity yeah. for that. I don't know where he got it from. But also, people, if you're going to do his move, do it right, man. Yeah, for real. But I don't think people in the NBA should rip it off. No. Only like WNBA can do it okay, and, and, and kids. Like kids because yeah, I think somebody tried to do it. and I think they were like low key mocking them and then yeah. have four fingers and he was right, like, right. "It's so three. I think it was a uh, homie, Cat, Car Anthony Towns that ended it wrong. And he's just corny anyway. Well, like Cat don't have his own thing, so he's always yeah. Just and it's like stuff. Joe Cat, yeah. <laughs> and he are just goofy. Like mm -hmm. so, it's like anything you do, we yeah. not sit down, please. But anyway, no, that's all I had on those basketball topics. I wanted to talk about that celebration for a minute, but I kept forgetting to bring it up. <laughs> um, but, Blair, anything else on the sports or movies front before we wrap uh, up? Nah, that's pretty much it. Shout out to Britney Spears for realizing she was wrong. And, uh, yeah. Britney, yeah, I guess she grabbed up on Wimby and got smacked by Spurs security. But then it turns out that she ended up hitting her own self. Oh, I didn't hear the that? result. Nah. There's footage, so that the police went and reviewed the footage, and it turns out she smacked her own self in the face. Yeah, I mean, no one was getting arrested from that incident, regardless. So I don't even know why she yeah, went to the police. Yeah, because she has to respect that if it was it was her in her shoes, she would want the her security to tackle whoever ran up as well. And I don't. Yeah, she, they're not going. <laughs> there was going to be no repercussions. So I don't yeah. even know why this was a thing. She, but my she phone was like, "Yo, they need to apologize." Like Spurs, Spurs Nation, and or not Spurs Nation, Spurs organization. But I do have like the alerts app, and that was. And I was like, I don't like. What is this? Yeah. Like, I just kept seeing the headline, 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 yeah. and then I finally read it, and I was like, uh, "Okay." Dad had me rolling. He was like, "Oops, I did it again." Yeah, they was killing her in the but comments. Yeah, remember too. I texted you with the "Hit me, baby, one more yep. time." Oh man, too yep. bad. But anyways, um, we'll have more movies. I feel like next episode we'll probably do some sneaker stuff. Uh, hopefully we'll get that sneaker to review. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we'll come back with some more uh, movies. Nothing's really out now. Oh, I can't wait for Oppenheimer. Oh my gosh. Barbie? I'll go watch it. I'll watch Barbie before I watch Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer looks... But you know those things look. are up my alley. Oppenheimer, that's up my alley. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that that's very true. <laughs> 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 Oppenheimer 
to look. Woo! Suspect. But we'll check it out. So look, there's some rough ones on the way. But there's some fun ones like the Insidious one, Red Door is coming out. I gotta go see that. Blair don't really do that one. Nah, dang. There was another trailer I saw. I can't think of the movie there's, now. But I'm so excited for it. And, I, and I'm disappointed. I can't remember the names. So I'll have to tell you next episode. There's Indiana Jones. No. There's Mission Impossible. I showed you that uh, stunt. Did not, you didn't read it. Um, but I sent it to you on Instagram uh, where he did the, his own stunt. He mm -hmm. really... Like, have you seen the Mission Impossible trailer? Well, you, nah, but I know he's done them in the past. This one was... Crazy. It, it's is. insane. Damn. So in the movie, there's like a drop where he drops off like a 3,000 foot cliff. Yeah. Why'd this man do the stunt? Now, it wasn't 3,000 feet, but it was it was high. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna drop the bike and then... <laughs> but why is he doing this? What does yeah. he need to prove? Yeah. He really rode it and dropped off the cliff. Like, now I gotta find it. Okay. And, and then pulled the parachute. And they're like, oh, we see a parachute. Oh, he's alive. Like, they, they almost lost him for a second. He's crazy. But what does he have to prove? I don't I mean, get he it. Just, he just, he enjoys it, you know? He I was like, after, like this is the John Morant thing I was telling you to watch. I'm really underestimated. Yo, Jared. Jared, what? Oh, yes, yeah. Bro, what the f***? Chill, 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 chill. Yeah. What are you, bro, chill? <laughs> yo, yo, Dylan. What's up, bro? What's <laughs> the word? What's going on? No, nothing. There's literally nothing going on over here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing funny to be laughing about, so we'll meet you at the locker room, bro. Yeah. Can't fucking stand that. <laughs> but when he said, Jared, Jared. Yeah, he's like, chill, yeah. That one happened to me. Uh, but no, where is it? Oh, this is the Mission Impossible one. So this is the movie scene. Mm -hmm. He really did that. That's crazy. He really did it. Shout out to For him. what? Why? Look how nervous they are. Yeah. And then waited and pulled the parachute. He's stupid. I saw Cammy. I saw Cammy. I saw Cammy. Now look. This man, Tom Cruise. And they just clapped him like it's another day. Yeah, that's a, that's dope. I love that. They would have said Cindy, like, do you want to? I've been like, nah. where's the stunt double? No, nah, I'm good. Yeah. But anyways, that's that's our show. We got some stuff coming up, uh, good movies and everything. And like I said, we'll probably end up doing a uh, what do you think a sneaker episode next? Yeah, more than likely. All right, you guys, stay tuned. Thanks for tuning it in. Like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram. All those good things. It is the Slate List Gang. We out.